So we're now recording. So welcome. And we're about to hear about Help Predatory Journal, What Do I Do by Anna Kraft. Thanks so much, Sam. And thanks everybody for being here. Like Sam said, these are recorded webinars. So y'all can consult this info in the future if you like. And there's also a link here to the slides, go.uncg.edu slash help 0914 um, if you'd like to follow along or if you'd like to reference the slides in the future. And I'm gonna stop my video to keep this from slowing down, um, but I'll turn it back on when we do the Q&A at the end. So this is me. I'm the coordinator of metadata services here in the university libraries. My pronouns are she, her. And here's what we're doing today. So we're gonna do a quick overview of what predatory publishing is, what that means. And then we'll get into some actual questions of like that might impact you and your researchers. So what should you do if a predatory journal solicits your work? What should you do if you or maybe one of your students submits work to a journal and then realizes it might be predatory? And what happens if a journal lists you on their editorial board without your permission? And these are all things that have happened to people at UNCG, unfortunately. And we'll also have some resources to help you identify and avoid predatory journals because avoiding them is really the best way to avoid these things happening. So a disclaimer, involvement with predatory journals can actually bring up legal issues, specifically related to copyright and potentially the use of names and likenesses of people and institutions like UNCG. So I'm a librarian, I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not offering legal advice in this presentation. This is really a general look at some of these issues. And I also want to acknowledge that every situation, every individual is different. So think about your situation if you end up uh, entangled with a predatory journal in some way. And then if you need help, definitely reach out. So first, what is predatory publishing? This is a definition that I like from a relatively recent comment piece in the journal Nature, and it's from an interdisciplinary group of scholars. It's not just librarians. Predatory publishing, unfortunately, impacts people across disciplines. So predatory journals and publishers are entities that prioritize self-interest at the expense of scholarship, and they're characterized by false or misleading information deviation from best editorial and publication practices, a lack of transparency, and or the use of aggressive and indiscriminate solicitation practices. And if you'd like to read more, there's a link there at the bottom to see that full piece. So what are predatory publishers trying to do? Well, the answer is on this slide. It's related to money. They're trying to make money from your work without adding any value or doing any work of their own. So these publishers are charging publication fees to authors, but they aren't providing those value add things that are so important in legitimate publishing. So they're often not providing peer review to make sure that the research is vetted and real. And they may not be providing other services like copy editing, layout, proofreading. So they might just receive an article and put it straight up online without doing anything to it. So that's really not very ethical, but it has a lot of impact also. It can waste money. These fees that they're charging could be potentially paid with tax dollars and grant money. We definitely don't wanna do that. And authors who publish with predatory journals can have the legitimacy of their scholarship called into question. That could impact them getting a job, could impact them getting tenure. So that can have real consequences for people. But potentially worse, this unreviewed scholarship is presented online as having been vetted and through peer review. And this misleads readers. And if you think about potentially issues with medical and healthcare research that might be put up online without any view, uh, peer review, that can cause real problems. Um, not just in medicine and healthcare, but this can happen in, in all fields, unfortunately. So we really want to do what we can to avoid this. So there are a lot of potential red flags for uh, these predatory journals, and I'm not going to read them all 
So we've got a lot of information to get through today, but we'll see uh, some of these examples on following slides. And more red flags here, as well as some links that will take you to see some examples of these things. But let's move on forward. So direct email solicitations are really common as a tactic with predatory journals. There are real legitimate journals that also email authors directly, but I find that it's much less common than the ways that predatory journals reach out. And there's kind of a pattern with these predatory journal email solicitations. They often praise your work, they really try to flatter you, and it may include citations of recent papers you've published, saying that they found them very interesting and they'd like to read more. But your area of research may not have any relation to the topic on which they're soliciting content. I'm a librarian, and for some reason, I get a lot of solicitations related to transportation, dentistry, respiratory medicine, and things like that, things that I have no business publishing on. The solicitation email and the journal website may not use good grammar and spelling, so that may be a red flag, although some of these journals seem to be trying to improve their practices in tricking people, unfortunately. And they may also offer you the quote unquote opportunity to join the editorial board, which is really not something that you want to take advantage of. So here's an example from the American Journal of Information Science and Technology. Just based on the title, this seems like it could be real, but there's some red flags, uh, some examples of things that were mentioned on previous slides. So, Dear Craft AR, deeply impressed by your previous article published in the other journal, this letter carries our sincerity of the invitation for you to publish your new papers in the peer-reviewed journal, blah, blah, blah. So, this, uh, the grammar and even the characters that are used here is kind of strange. So we, this, is, this is one example of a call for manuscripts from a predatory journal. And here's another, which has even more red flags, lots of things that really just don't make sense. In that chart near the top, it's really unclear what some of these things mean. Last date of paper submission, notification of publication due date within three to four days, publication date within five days after registration. What do these things even mean? Um, and if they're actually using this timeline, there's no time for peer review. And then we see uh, some kind of <laughs> interesting, funny, what have you, comments toward the bottom. Uh, AGER is a nonprofit, non loss organization. AGER is a group of scientists, research persons of more than 25 countries not any publication firm for their mandatory benefits. So the grammar here is all over the place. We definitely don't want to publish with this journal. But unfortunately, not all journals have those glaring red flags in the information that they're sharing about themselves. Yes, Sam, the sincerity of the invitation. Uh, <laughs> I think these things are kind of funny. Um, but also, if you're not reading closely, or if you are maybe a new researcher and you don't know about predatory practices, uh, these things can be really confusing. So we want to be able to help our researchers evaluate journals to make sure that they're not predatory. One site that I like is called Think, Check, Submit, and they have a checklist that you can go through these steps consider aspects of the publication and think about whether or not you might want to publish that with them or avoid them. And there's also another site that I, or a tool that I just became familiar with recently called Journal Evaluation Tool. This was created by librarians at Loyola Marymount University, one of whom actually used to work here at UNCG. It's available online, anyone can use it, and it offers a pretty lengthy rubric and a scoring sheet to help you evaluate journals. And you see just a little piece of the rubric here. It actually is much longer, but this is what to expect. It provides you some uh, criteria and offers some information about whether to characterize the journal as being good, fair, or poor based on different practices. And then you could add up whether it scored three, two, one in the various areas and using the scoring sheet, determine uh, whether or not you think you want to publish with a journal or just avoid them completely. And if you need assistance with evaluating journal quality, 
definitely think about contacting your librarian. If you're in an academic department, your you have an assigned liaison librarian, and that is your first point of contact. So that's your best place to start. If you're not sure who your liaison is, there's a link here that will take you to the list and you can find out. And your liaison might loop me in, I can help with this too, but I really recommend starting with your liaison. So let's get into some of these questions. What happens if a predatory journal solicits my work? What should I do? So unfortunately, if you publish article-based scholarship, you probably have been or will be contacted by predatory journals. Here's another solicitation I got from the American Journal of Information Science and Technology. Based on the title, that sounds like it, it's within my area of expertise, but I definitely don't wanna publish with them. Some solicitation emails are just blatantly predatory, like this one, best indexed peer-reviewed international journal, all invention journals are monthly based journals which used to publish on exact dates since the last six years. This doesn't make any sense. Um, if you get something like this, just mark it as spam and delete it. But unfortunately, not all of them are immediately clear. So what should you do if you're not sure about a journal? If it seems like it could be real, if it doesn't have those glaring red flags, what should you do? So in that case, I recommend not click, clicking on the links that are directly in the email. It may say that it's gonna take you to one place, but it might actually take you somewhere else. And some of these journals actually uh, have it set up so they can tell who has clicked on the links. And if they see that you've clicked on them, they are gonna send you a bunch of follow-up emails. And think, research the journal before you even consider responding. Do your research first, and then you may not want to respond. So start with your preferred search engine and look up the journal. Don't just read what the journal says about itself. Look for what others are saying about it as well. This is called lateral reading. And what I like to do is go to my favorite search engine, type in the title of the journal, and then add the word predatory. And that's a quick way to typically find information about the journal and potentially predatory practices and things people are saying about it. Always consider the authority, the credibility of the sites that you're looking at when you're looking for this information. And think about the context as well. Um, so uh, be skeptical, be questioning as you're doing this research. Also look carefully and maybe even skeptically at the journal's title and publisher. Is the journal really what it says? And I'll show an example in just a moment, uh, a little more specifically about this issue. You may want to use a checklist like Think, Check, Submit, or a rubric like the journal evaluation tool. And if you want a second opinion or you're really not sure, think about contacting your librarian. So unfortunately, the title is not always enough to evaluate a journal. Titles cannot be copyrighted. We see this with like books and movies, sometimes uh, two movies have the same title, two books have the same title. So that happens with journals too. And yes, Leah says that ResearchGate is a useful social media site that can have interesting discussions about journals and their quality and potential predatory practices. I definitely have found some helpful information on that site when I've been researching journals. Thanks for bringing that up. So we recently had a student who emailed me and said that they received a solicitation from the Journal of Pharmacy and Pharmacology. And I'm glad that she forwarded the email that she got because there are two, at least two, journals of pharmacy and pharmacology that are operating right now. So one has been around since 1870. It's associated with Oxford University Press. It's also associated with the Royal Pharmaceutical Society. This journal is the real deal. It's been around a long time. It's established. It is legitimate but there's another journal with the exact same title that is published by David Publishing Company. And in the email on the right that the student received, that David Publishing Company was highlighted by whoever sent the email. It was not highlighted by me or the student. I think they're doing that so they don't get sued by representing themselves completely as a separate journal. But here they're definitely trying to capitalize on having that title that is the same as this other journal. And they're hoping to 
fool authors and get them to submit their work. So this is terrible. Um, but it's uh, the reason I bring this up is to say definitely don't go on title alone when you're concerned about this. So be skeptical of email solicitations for publication opportunities, especially when you're not familiar with the journal or publisher. And the library can help if you want another opinion. So what if you submit a manuscript to a journal and then you're, you get concerns that they might be predatory? What should you do? Sometimes a journal might seem legitimate at first, but when you engage with them, things start to feel off. What should you do in this situation? These are some red flags you might see after submitting your work. A lot of them have to do with money. The journal might demand payments that weren't made clear to you before you submitted the work, different amounts than they told you up front, or payments to countries that don't match where they say their business is located. They might ask you who you would like to review your work, which is a very bad sign. Um, in that situation, a person could have it sent to themselves at another email address, have it sent to their friend or their mother. This is not the kind of peer review that is generally used in legitimate publishing. You might also receive intimidating or aggressive communications if you try to ask questions or withdraw your work. So if you have submitted a manuscript to a journal and you want to withdraw it before publication because you're concerned about predatory practices, keep a record of all of your emails with the journal, emails that you sent, emails that they sent, and via email, insist that you must withdraw your article. They may ask you to pay some kind of charge. They may say that they have put so much work into your article, they can't possibly give it back to you without some kind of payment. Stand firm don't pay them and definitely don't sign anything with them. Um, and we on the Office of Research and Engagement may be able to offer further advice or assistance in this. It really depends on the situation. So reach out if you or a student is in this situation. One step further, if you have submitted your work and it's been published in a questionable journal and you want to withdraw it, this gets stickier and more difficult. If you have transferred copyright to the journal, you may not be able to get that paper back. Um, there may be, it, it might be possible, but it, this, unfortunately, we may not be able to help you get the paper back. But contact the publisher or editor via email, request that your article be taken down from the website. Again, they may ask you to pay some kind of withdrawal or re retraction fee. We don't recommend paying this. Um, and we may be able to offer further advice if you're in this situation. Predatory journals, unfortunately, are always looking for ways to convince researchers to submit their work. And some of these solicitations and websites can look very real. So if this happens to you or one of your students or colleagues, please reach out and ask for assistance. But the best way to avoid this is to do your research first. So you are less likely to send off your work to a predatory publication. All right, moving right along. What if I find my name listed as a member of an editorial board that I haven't agreed to be on? Why would a journal take someone's information without asking them? These predatory publishers want to make their journals look more legitimate in order to convince others to submit their work. So sometimes they pull real information, names, photos, titles from legitimate websites. It could be a departmental or university website, and they put that information up on their own. And then we've got prospective authors who see that real information and may recognize those people and think, wow, if so-and-so is associated with this journal, maybe it's okay. They don't always know to question what they see. So this has actually happened to at least one person at UNCG. Luckily, it does not seem to be widespread or common. If this happens to you, don't panic. Um, email the organization or publisher, ask for your name and or likeness to be taken down, keep a record of this and any responses. You might want to then update your own scholarly profiles, your website, your social media, to explicitly say what your affiliations are. I'm affiliated with such and such department at UNCG and any journals, whatever. And you may want to disclaim affiliation with specific publishers or journals that want people to think you're associated with them. 
if there is a university affiliation associated with your name and likeness on the predatory site, then it may uh, potentially be escalated to a higher level that uh, ORE or, some, uh, well, I, I can't speak for your university council, but I, in talking to people at other schools, that is the sort of thing that potentially university council can be involved in. Um, but I would suggest contacting us or contacting the Office of Research and Engagement for further assistance. If you see someone you know listed as being involved in a questionable journal, consider reaching out to the person, but really think about this. Um, it's possible they don't know their information is being used by the journal, but with some of these journals, there are gray areas and one person can think, okay, this journal is fine, not the best, but I think I, I support it. Or another person might be like, no way, I don't wanna be involved in this journal. So there, are, there can be some gray areas with evaluating journals as well. And overall, if you are in doubt about a journal, a publisher, even a conference, unfortunately, there are predatory conferences. Please reach out, ask your librarian. You can reach out to me. Um, we would be glad to help you. So that was a pretty quick whirlwind here. I appreciate y'all being here. And if you have any questions, I would be delighted to answer them. I've got a little resources list here with a link to our scholarly communications guide, our liaisons list, Think, Check, Submit, the journal evaluation tool, as well as links to presentations and slides from some related webinars within the past couple of months. So, um, thanks y'all. I'm going to stop the share and turn my camera back on. And if you have any questions, feel free to enter them in the chat or um, put them, uh, Please turn on your, your mic if you would like to talk. So if anyone has any questions, now is the time. I am getting a link to our assessment too, as people might be thinking of their questions. So that's a quick assessment. I'll also send it out in the email if people wanna fill it out then. I actually didn't realize that ORE could be involved in cases, sometimes potentially be involved in cases where scholars had unknowingly or unwillingly been affiliated with a predatory journal. So that is new to me. Thank you so much for pointing that out. Yeah, yeah. so in, uh, in trying to help researchers resolve some of these issues, um, I've worked with Terry Shelton and she has like as the person who is head of a lot of research and engagement um, on campus, she she has a lot more, I guess, like weight than I do. Like if I tried to reach out to a predatory journal and be like, take down our researchers information, uh, it doesn't have quite the same level of um, the uh, impact and so she has she's been great and helping us with some of these issues before, which I really appreciate. So um, it's been kind of a, a, a joint effort to both get that education out there, but also have people at a high enough level in the university to um, to try to to get these journals to give back an article or take down someone's information or something like that. But like I said, we really want uh, researchers to not be in these situations in the, the first place. So we wanna try to get this information out to them so they hopefully don't send their, their articles to predatory journals. Thank you. So I appreciate y'all that are liaisons being here so you can um, know about what we can offer to the, the folks in your areas. Um, yeah, yeah I and think if, I, I think oh, go I ahead, actually Sarah. got, um, I've gotten a couple of these emails and they, they're, they're kind of bizarre. Um, I think actually I might, might have forwarded it to you, but, um, it's like, it, yeah. And they, it, they sort of came in waves and then it's died down a little bit, but, uh, I, I it's amazing what people will do, you know? Yeah, I find that anytime I have recently published something, published an article, I tend to like get a kind of round of these emails. I think some of these publishers are like 
watching table of contents alerts, seeing who is publishing, contacting them because they think, all right, this person is active in publishing, wants to publish, maybe I can get them to publish in my fake journal. Um, so they are just sending out lots and lots of requests and hoping they get a few people who are willing to not do their research and pay their uh, pay them to put their their information online. It just seems so desperate and yeah, skank, skanky. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I'm always glad to to help evaluate journals. So if um, anybody who wants to forward those solicitations to me, you are welcome to do that. I'm glad to to check on them. And I'm also always glad to see funny ones um, to potentially include in presentations. <laughs> Anna? Yes. I, I just wanted to comment that um, I, I do really appreciate you offering this webinar. I think this is really important information. And I really thought that I was on top of this. Um, <laughs> and I had the most bizarre experience where um, I submitted a, a manuscript to a very reputable journal, a good one. It was rejected. And then um, within 24 hours, I received an email from the journal saying, we think that your paper might be a better fit for this other journal that I'd never heard of, that it was clearly not a good fit for, but I thought, well, that's weird. And I ended up sending it to the other journal thinking, well, you know, the rep, the recommendation came from, and maybe I'm not understanding the, you know, brain, like how they're defining brain, maybe hormones and brains, you know, and um, it was immediately accepted, followed by a request for money. And at that point, obviously I said, forget it. And then I contacted the, the journal that I had initially submitted to and I said, what the heck? And they're like, are you kidding me? Really? I, we didn't know. I thought, oh my gosh. So a reputable journal editor was somehow wow. saw this and was referring rejected papers over to a predatory journal. That's terrible. That's the point at which I was just like, how are, how are any of us supposed yeah. to? Yeah, wow. You know, that, uh, I thought I was on top of things, but yeah. you, I guess you forget that journal editors are people too, and they can be fooled also. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And I, so one thing I guess to keep in mind with situations like that is that journal practices can change over time. So a journal that may have been uh, at a, a good level, reputable, have, having good practices, if it gets new editorship, it gets a new publisher and people start treating it differently and those practices may deteriorate over time. Um, it, it is really unfortunate that scholars have to take on so much in like, not just writing their papers and getting them out there, but also this level of making sure like with everything that, wow, these, is this journal real? Um, it's, it's a lot to do. Um, but yeah, thank you for that. I, I am, I'm dismayed to hear uh, about that situation. Yeah, that's spooky. So did that, did the original journal, I mean, were they hacked or did they actually send that message out? No, they had really sent it because when I contacted the editor, the editor said that, that he had no idea and was horrified and, you know, he was going to take action. I don't know if that was all true. Well, but, it's good uh, that you let them know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Very, but it was just yeah. very, very strange. Yeah, yeah. that is. Mm. Yeah, for sure. It reached a new level of creepy. Yeah. Well, oh, that's unfortunate. Um, well, it is right after 12 o'clock. Sam, thank you so much for uh, the opportunity to, to share this information. Yeah. Thank you for, for your, coming. your hosting. Yeah, I dropped a lot of links in the chat uh, just for everyone's information. There's an assessment to let us know how we did. Um, there is a, um, the next webinar is in October by Maggie Murphy, one of our humanities librarian, as well as our visual arts librarian, digital humanities, um, who's going to be doing what is new with JSTOR, um, which I think will be great. And then there's other ones coming up too beyond that uh, to take a look at, one by Leah, who's here. So uh, get excited for the uh, science one. And then, um, yeah, let me know if y'all have any questions. I want to be sensitive of time. But thank you for coming, everyone. And um, I'll see many of y'all, all of y'all soon. Thanks, Anna. Thanks. Bye. Bye.